Around May 2015, I bought a Spanish book called Palabras de Vida del Gran Maestro. I had every intention of reading it. The words were very unfamiliar to me. At that time, I hadn't even finished my Duolingo Spanish course. I bought a notebook so that I could write down all the words of Palabras de Vida on one line and the English translation of these words on another line. Unfortunately, I lost interest quickly and I only tried to read the book a few times. That year, I ended up reading about half a page of it. In June 2017, I decided to try reading another Spanish book called El Camino de Cristo. It was a struggle, but I finished reading it in April 2018. I want to share my story. My name is Franklin, and this is First1000Hours.com. Don't give up on your language learning marathon. You can make it. You can make it. Through your first thousand hours. At the end of 2016 and the beginning of 2017, I started to try to learn Spanish again. And not only was I learning Spanish, I was also seeking out materials to help me learn how to learn a language. And I stumbled upon something that was revolutionary and changed the way that I approached language learning. And that was the input hypothesis that has been popularized by Stephen Krashen. He stressed the importance of reading and listening in language acquisition. Why is reading so important in language acquisition? James Hamilton, who was born in 1769 and who was a proponent of learning languages through reading, said this. The man who has not learned to read knows only the words which he has learned in conversation. His vocabulary is smaller than can well be imagined. Unfortunately, I don't have time to really unpack the input hypothesis or also talk about Ziff's law, which really corroborates what James Hamilton said. But I plan to do so in a future podcast. But Nico Mason, who is also a proponent of reading and listening to learn languages, said this. Students can reach the upper intermediate level largely from reading and listening and can reach the most advanced academic language level only through reading. More skill building, more correction, and more output do not consistently result in more proficiency. Rather, reading is the only way we become good readers, develop a good writing style, an adequate vocabulary, advanced grammar, and the only way we become good spellers. So what I take from this is that if I just focus on having conversations with other people in Spanish, I'm not going to get as much grammatical knowledge that I will if I read things in Spanish. I'm not going to get as much vocabulary as I could get if I read things in Spanish. So to me, reading is the foundation of me understanding Spanish. I also wanted to share with you why I chose El Camino de Cristo. I've learned as I continue to learn how to learn a language of these terms called extensive reading and intensive reading. Extensive reading is when one reads just slightly above their level of comprehension. And then intensive reading is when someone chooses to read a book that is really hard to read. And I chose for myself to read a very high level book that was higher than my reading comprehension, much higher than my reading comprehension. And I did that because I believe it's a principle of the mind that the mind is going to adapt to whatever it accustoms itself to. So I want to accustom myself to reading very high level Spanish, even though I'm not there yet, because I believe as I read more and more books, it's going to become easier and easier for me to understand what I'm reading. Based on the videos I've seen on YouTube and the language learning community, the general recommendation is for people to read extensively because it can be more pleasurable to read and people probably won't give up as much. But for me, I've chosen to read intensively. Here's some interesting facts about El Camino de Cristo from an organization called The White Estate. Ellen White, who is the author of El Camino de Cristo, is the most translated woman writer in the entire history of literature and the most translated American author of either gender. Her life-changing masterpiece on successful Christian living, Steps to Christ, has been published in more than 140 languages. The cool thing about Steps of Christ as well is that you can get the audiobooks in different languages for free. And in the show notes of this podcast, I'm going to give you the links of where you can download the audiobook versions of Steps of Christ in Spanish, French, Italian, 
Portuguese, Romanian, Russian, Chinese, and English, as well as the PDFs of the book for free. You might be wondering, how can I learn Spanish from reading El Camino de Cristo? And I just want to read to you two sentences in the first chapter of El Camino de Cristo. The first sentence is this, Todo alma era preciosa a sus ojos. And basically that means, Every soul was precious to his eyes. That was talking about Christ. And working in the field of eye care, the word ojos has special significance to me. And I've actually been able to use that word ojos on the job. So ojos has an application in the book talking about how everyone is precious in Christ's sight. But I also can use that same sentence to help me communicate with Spanish speaking people in eye care. This is the other sentence. Dios es amor está escrito en cada tallo de naciente hierba. So that basically means God is love is written on each stem of the rising grass. So if I need someone to cut the grass, I can say, please cut the hierba. So I'm learning about the love of God, but I'm also learning about um, ways that I can use the word hierba to be able to communicate in other situations, other practical situations in my life. Also, when I read and listened to El Camino de Cristo, I experienced the power of combining reading and listening. And I want to play an audio clip from November 6, 2017 about this thing. I just experienced something that was pretty interesting. Um, I have not listened to the full chapter of, of El Camino de Cristo, chapter 2. Yes, I just started to listen to the most of chapter 2 that I have heard before. Um, while I was driving, I only have like a seven minute drive or something like that to work. And it's amazing that I understood a lot of what I was listening to. I probably would say maybe about 40% or so. Sometimes I was a little distracted, but that was probably more than when I first heard El Camino de Cristo chapter one, um, when I first started reading. I think that um, the combination of reading the chapter first and then listening to it is a really good combination. Understanding 40% of what I was listening to was a very big deal for me, especially at that time, because I wrote on October 23rd, 2017. When I listen to other things, I understand anywhere from around 1 to 15% normally. I have more things I want to share with you about my experience reading my first Spanish book, which I will do in an upcoming podcast. My name is Franklin, and this is First1000Hours.com. <laughs> Don't give up on your language learning marathon. You can make it. You can make it. Through your first thousand hours.